Welcome to this Rule of Waves 2 guide to maximizing your gunnery. My name's Dickie, and this is my channel where I like to explore the games that I love to play. And if you're anything like me, when you play Rule of Waves 2, you kind of just follow the ships around, shooting away, perhaps closing the range or opening the range a little bit, depending on how well you're hitting, but not really giving any thought whatsoever to how the game very accurately models gunnery and how to maximize that. And I've had a little route around in the game and I was aware that there are some incredibly detailed um, modifiers to how successful your gunnery is, but I never really understood them. The game isn't terribly good at surfacing them to you to make it obvious what to do. So hopefully this video will help. First of all, what does good actually look like? So here I've done some rough guideline percentages. Basically anything under 2% hit chance is a bit rubbish. Um, just think, you know, your magazine is only 100 shells per gun, maybe 130, 150. At 2% with 100 shells, you're going to make two hits. That's not nearly enough to sink your opponent, you know, even if you've got 10 broadside or something like that, that's still a rubbishy 20 hits if you're lucky. Having 2% itself is sort of okay if you are at the margins of what good, good gunnery looks like. So if you're at extended range, for example, and I've included some real life battle examples where these kinds of percentages were hit. At three and a half percent, I think you're in an okay region. I mean, it's not great, but at least you're not gratuitously wasting your shells and you have a, a reasonable chance of demolishing your enemy ship. Obviously, more is better. And under good conditions, I would be expecting 5%. And by conditions, I don't mean just weather. I mean the overall conditions for fighting the battle. Your range is good enough. You're not interfering with smoke. You're maximizing whatever the weather uh, allows you to do. If you get into a brilliant position, then 10% or more is amazing shooting. I've included here some links to uh, some further information if you wish. And obviously I will, as usual, include the script uh, in, the, uh, in the notes below. So how does that play out? So this graph shows you two figures, the blue and the red. The blue is the basic hit chance. That's a calculation of the type of gun you have and its quality against the range fundamentally. And that basic hit chance increases as the range here decreases. Obvious enough. Don't have to be a rocket science to know that. The red, however, is the final hit chance. And the final hit chance is modified by something like 39 modifiers. When I was about to do the first uh, take of this guide, I discovered 27 modifiers and was feeling pretty pleased with myself. And then I ran a few more battle practices and I'm up to 39. And I'm pretty sure there are more than that. Although hopefully they're kind of edge cases that don't come up very often, for example, fog. Here in this analysis of 10 salvos fired, you can see at the beginning, the final hit chance was being massively downgraded. We were turning, the enemy was turning, there was smoke, everything you could imagine to uh, spoil your aim. Gradually, as the ships steadied themselves into a straighter line, as I reduced speed from maximum, because maximum speed causes vibration, which causes another modifier, the final hit chant creeps up to around about 50%. And often, if your final hit chance is 50% of your basic hit chance, you're doing pretty well. There are exceptions that there are times, as I show later, when actually your final hit chance can actually be higher than your uh, basic hit chance. But, you know, 50% and above is doing reasonably well. 39 modifiers so far. Um, I've grouped them into 10 different types, so it's not just an overwhelming list. However, I will, in the links below, have an overwhelming <laughs> list so you can just print it out and have it beside you as a ready reference. 
fleet quality modifiers just apply to everybody in the entire fleet. The weather conditions equally apply to everybody, and ditto visibility applies to everybody. Firing ship characteristics is what kind of gun platform your ship is like. Ranging is a particular uh, condition where uh, you are trying to find the range, and obviously as you try to find the range you have no idea what it is and you're very unlikely to hit. Luckily ranging doesn't last for very long. And then there's a number of different ways in which gunnery is interfered with. Your own ship firing can uh, interfere with itself and ruin your aim. The target ship can be uncooperative too. Your friendly ships can get in the way, and if you're under fire, as you're likely to be, that causes an additional interference. And then finally, there is smoke all over the place. Before I unpack these, let's have a little look at what this looks like in practice with a real life battle. So here we are with a little battle in the lower North Sea between the Soviet Union over here and the French over there. It's about mid-battle. They've tangled it up a fair bit, but no decisive hits. I'm just going to change the names to show the names of the capital ships. So there's uh, one Guidon class. There's two identi unidentified ships. They're also both Guidons. There's another Guidon off here that we can't see at the moment. And we have the Maxim uh, Gorky, the uh, Ardzenikis... Oh. Arjenikidze. Arjenikidze. Okay, I think we'll play with that one. And the uh, Voroshilov. As you'd expect at this point, these identified, unidentified ships are straggling uh, Arjenika and also the Maxim Gorky. Likelihood is they have superior fire control to be able to do that when we can't even tell. Uh, what it's like. This is um, it's only the middle of the afternoon. There's no extra special sighting. Uh, daylight sighting is 26,500, so perfectly normal. We are uh, behind. Over here in the log, noticing when you are straddling and you are being straddled is really important because it gives us this information that the French have better fire control than we have by, by implication. When you are straddling, your rate of fire goes up 20. When you're not, when you're doing deliberate fire, your rate of fire is minus 20. So there's a 40 lift in your rate of fire between deliberate fire and straddling. So it's important to note that. So that's one area to look at. The log, are we straddling? Are we being straddled? The division screen here shows you who we are firing at and what the final hit chance is. And um, this is something that I've often ignored. Usually the ship in the lead has the highest figure uh, because the enemy here is behind us. It's actually uh, Voshilov that uh, has the best hit chance. And if we have a look at that, you see that if we go to the details here, which is the accuracy report, um, we're at 19 and a half thousand yards. Our crew quality is zero, which means they're good. We've got 10 on our fire control, 20 on our tech level, minus 10 for our ship turning, and minus 10 for the target ship turning. Uh, we are under fire, so minus 20. So overall, it balances out that we are slightly behind our basic hit chance with a final hit chance of 2.23. If we um, look at Maxim Gorky, which is slightly worse, I imagine it's, yes, this target sighting level. Because we haven't actually identified what the ship is, that applies an, an additional negative mod. Also, target aspect is minus 10. So when the ship is beam on, the target ship is beam on, there's just literally less to aim at. Um, so you get a negative mod for that too. And that's really all you need to do in battle. You don't have to obsessively check every single turn, but do watch for whether you are straddling. So the Maxim Gorky fires at the unidentified ship and uh, straddles it, well done, and hits it, even though it doesn't know what this ship is. Well done, lads. So watch that most of the time. Occasionally go in here and check out what the percentage here is. 
you can see from the guy's gunnery line, the red line here, we're nearly at the maximum range. So if you remember back earlier, I said 2% when you are at extended range is fair enough. And here we are nudging 2%. Uh, aside from the last ship, which is doing a little bit better because it knows what it's shooting at. And that's all you need to do in a battle. So let's go back and have a look at these in a little bit more detail, with particular emphasis to what can you do about it. So two fleet quali uh, quality modifiers, national accuracy and the tech level. The national accuracy, I believe, is actually the gunnery doctrine, the advanced training you do in gunnery. Often in Rule the Waves, the same thing is called two different names, and I believe that's that. And it gives you a 10% lift. So that's the equivalent of having a good crew become elite, or an elite crew become super elite. However, it's really expensive, but it does apply across the whole fleet. So it's not a miracle weapon. And for those of you who habitually put your ships on mothballs or in reserve fleet and then don't do anything to improve that and send them straight out to battle, you may wonder why they perform badly. And you some, I've seen some people thinking that they, they think the AI is cheating. No, your crews are rubbish. Tech level, minus 50 to plus 30. So a huge range in technology. Obviously the minus 50 is more at the pre-dreadnought range and the plus 30 is in the 1940s and 50s. Range influences this. So even though your technology might be poor, the modifier might get better as you close the range. And obviously, research, research, research. Weather conditions. My suspicion isn't this isn't all. There's probably ones for snow and storms and fog and mist and all sorts of things. Uh, as you can see, they're all negative and there's not very much you can do about it. Um, the sea state may be very bad or not so bad, and obviously something in between. The others are what they are. Note the casemates in heavy seas uh, has this uh, minus 10 applied. Just at the start of the battle, notice what the weather conditions are. If you are in a strong gale, you are not going to get a lot of hits unless you get super close. Visibility. Sort of likewise, so minus 10 if you're in dusk, minus 30 if you aren't in dusk, but your target is. Uh, glare, which is where you are shooting into a very low sun, um, will give you quite a big negative modifier, so avoid shooting into the setting sun, or, or indeed the rising sun. Uh, nighttime is obvious. Target sighting level, so this is where you can see it, but you don't know what it is, as we saw in the battle. And then near sighting range. So um, you're at the very limits of what you can actually see. There may be um, other visibility modifiers as well as other weather modifiers. Ship firing characteristics are to do fundamentally with the nature of your ship. So first of all, your fire control, again, a large spread. Range can improve this and of course, research. Crew quality, as I mentioned earlier, has a substantial range. It's influenced by the status you put it on. So if it comes out of mothballs or hasn't finished working up, it's gonna be minus 20. If it's elite, it's gonna be plus 10. Exercises before a war will improve it and battle experience will improve it. Radar assist is uh, self-evident. Um, there may be higher up boosts to radar for later technology uh, radars that I haven't seen. Small salvo, so if you're only firing two guns, definitely, possibly three, I'm not quite sure, you'll receive this minus 10 uh, modifier. Um, so if you're chasing and you only have a couple of guns bearing, then if you turn to your broadside, that will remove this. Obviously, if you've received damage, nothing much you can do. Or if you're one of those horrible uh, 1900 ships that only have a single heavy turret fore and a single heavy turret rear, you'll get this applied. If you're a destroyer or a corvette, you have quite a large negative modifier applied to you because you're just a bit of a rubbish gun platform, really. Um, 
that will improve as you close the range. For light cruisers, ditto. Uh, I haven't seen it improve because you close the range, but that's quite likely given the behavior of the destroyers and the corvettes. And then if you're just a secondary battery, um, you got minus 10. Obviously these things are cumulative. If you're a second battery, minus 10, and you're a casemate in heavy seas, then you'll be on minus 20. Here's three separate types all run together, so I don't have to do many, many slides for you. Um, so first of all, if you're under fire, as you saw in the battle, you'll get a minus 10 or minus 20 uh, impact. Uh, if you open the range, this will get less. Uh, it does affect your rate of fire. It, you know, puts your gunners off. Um, ranging where you don't know what the range is, has a big negative modifier. So whilst you're ranging, don't expect to hit anything. Luckily, you don't often range for very long. Uh, you normally then go to deliberate fire and most of your time is spent at deliberate fire, which has this minus 20 rate of fire modifier. Um, and then straddling, when you found the target, uh, will give you this plus 20 rate of fire. So well worth watching the difference between that. And then finally, smoke can give you a huge negative modifier. Uh, and all you can do really is try and maneuver to remove the smoke interference. Uh, the smoke can come from uh, obviously funnel smoke or smoke screens. And it can be both from your own friendly ships and it can be from enemy ships too, possibly both. Firing ship modifiers. So this is things that you mainly can influence. So if your secondary battery is firing at the same target as your main armament, you'll get this interference modifier of minus 10. Not much you can do about that. Ship turning is a huge modifier. So avoid radical turns. Obviously, if you turn radically, you also lose a lot of speed. It also impacts your rate of fire uh, as well, because again, it puts your gunners off. So if you turn at more than 45 degrees, you're going to get this whopping 80%, and then it goes down gradually until about a 10% turn. So if you turn less than 10%, you'll get a zero modifier. So better from a gunnery perspective to do four small turns than to turn 40 degrees and get a much, much bigger modifier. Firing ship high speed vibration speaks for itself. If you're absolutely at max speed, the whole ship can tend to vibrate as the uh, engines power along and that will make your optics less accurate and all the rest of it. Uh, firing ship evading, you can't help that. If you are under sustained accurate fire, you will start automatically evading. Firing ship damage, so again, if you take damage, it will uh, impact your accuracy and your rate of fire. It's quite possible that there are worse impacts than this. Uh, I've not had a conning tower critical hit or a bridge critical hit, unlike someone like Tortuga, who I saw have both a conning tower uh, critical hit and then a bridge critical hit like two salvos later. So I would expect them to come up with some pretty large negative mods. Friendly ships can get in the way. So ships can either foul the range, i.e. be in between you and the target. And again, this is just about maneuvering. It might also apply to enemy ships fouling the range and ships firing at the same target. So as you saw in the earlier battle, when only one ship is actually a valid target, all three of the Russian and the Soviet battlecruisers aimed at it and you get these modifiers minus 20 if there's two ships firing at the same target and minus 30 if there's more than two. The target ship can mess up your gunnery in a variety of ways, mainly unintentional. So the target size, you can go down to minus 40 for destroyers and corvettes, plus 10 for capital ships. And this modifier is changed by closing the range. Target aspect, is the ship broadside on or is it beam on or quarter on uh, will also impact um, your gunnery so you can just maneuver to try and take that away or if your enemy is turning just wait and they will come out of their turn 
Target evading, likewise to when the firing ship is evading, that's just an automatic thing. The target turning, I've seen minus 20. Um, there may well be worse modifiers uh, that I haven't seen for when it does a sharp turn. Target low speed is a plus 10. This is when you're under, I'm going to say 10 knots, but I'm not absolutely sure, but you know, really slow. And it is applied to merchant ships always and to obviously slow down damaged warships. Target loose formation is a later period formation when uh, ships aren't packed together quite so tightly, particularly uh, as a defense against air attack. Um, and it makes them a harder gunnery tight target. Uh, and it makes them a harder gunnery target. Uh, this includes ships on their own. And then finally, who who have greater room to maneuver. And then finally, uh, medium guns firing at a small destroyer get minus 20. And again, this is cumulative. So if your medium gun is also your second battery and your secondary battery is in heavy seas, then you'll get a minus 40 by adding all of them together. And that's it for all of the modifiers I've found so far. Here is an example of when it can really go as good as you can possibly expect from that same battle. So here I had the uh, Maxim Gorky with a basic hit chance of 2.79 that had all the negative modifiers removed at this stage. And so was actually hitting on 3.72. Well done, Maxim Gorky. That I think is, is relatively rare. If you are being modified by less than 50% from your basic hit chance to your final hit chance, then I think you're doing pretty well. Bearing in mind those overall percentages of a minimum of 2%, 3.5, okay, 5, good, 10, exceptional. Before I conclude, I think it's important to think about gunnery in its totality. Now, naval officers knew this stuff long before Frederick Lanchester came along and did some nice differential equations to show how it really worked. But Frederick came along and worked it out in, I think, 15, 1915 or 16, during the First World War. So let me deconstruct this. You've got the blue fleet strength here, which is this blue line on the graph. You've got the red fleet strength here, which is unsurprisingly the red line on this graph. And in the uh, yellowy brown, you have the difference in damage that the two are doing, which is red's advantage, because it's always in red's favor in this example, which is this uh, yellow line going up. We've got 10 salvos to track. In salvo one, blue strength is 10. They are doing 10% damage. Uh, I've said 10% because that's a really easy number to work with. Red strength is seven and they're doing 10% damage. So the difference, red's advantage, is 0 0.3. In the second salvo, therefore, blue strength is 9.3, because it's had 0 0.7 reduced from it, and red strength is six, because they've had one reduced from it, which means they'll be hitting on 0 0.93 and 0 0.6, and the difference is 0 0.33, which is slightly more. And that's the kicker here. Because in Salvo 3, the same happens. Blue goes down, it does 10% damage. Red goes down, it does 10% damage. But because of the different rates of damage being caused, the difference is now 0 0.363, slightly more again. Blue's strength slightly goes down, but sl starts to even off whilst red strength goes down and down and down. And although it's slightly evening off, it's not enough to stop it from going to zero, or indeed mathematically to minus numbers. And here you can see the gradual improvement over the salvos between the two. Now I've actually mapped this over 20 in order to make this graph uh, a little bit more obvious, but you can see here it's inexorable rise in the devastating power of red. So by the 10th salvo, blue's strength is just a slight smidgen under red strength starting strength, whereas red has been annihilated. That's true if all things are equal. 
And the reason for paying attention to gunnery is to make that not true, particularly if you are the weaker force. Now, the battle generator in Rule of Waves 2 is pretty good at largely placing equal forces together. And part of your tactical skill will be in dividing out and separating part of your opponent's force so you can bring this kind of evil maths to bear and crush them before the separated unit has a chance to intervene. Likewise, if you do start unequal, it's important to know that if you are in the superior position, you're probably going to win so long as you don't muck it up. And if you're in red's position, you need to either run away or you need to find some way to stopping the rate of damage between the two of you being the same and giving yourself some sort of gunnery advantage. And to do that, you need to know about gunnery, which is why I've done all of this. So to recap, if you're straddling, brilliant, don't change, let it continue. It will probably fall off. Straddling goes from straddling, deliberate, straddling, deliberate quite a bit. But you don't have to do anything too much and just be aware that as you straddle, you've got a 40% boost to your rate of fire and you're much more likely to hit. That's not to say you can't hit in deliberate fire, you absolutely can, but straddling certainly gives you a boost. If you're being straddled, you may want to consider changing course in order to apply some negative modifiers to your opponent's shots uh, and then resuming course again once they've lost the straddle. Obviously, if you're both straddling each other, you might want to just think do I just stay there and take my lumps because I'm giving as good as I'm getting? Both of these two messages appear in the log on the left hand side. You need to read those to see if you are straddling or being straddled. Thirdly, every once in a while, check your final hit chance in the division screen just to make sure that you are hitting as you expect to. So if you're at the edge of your range and you're doing 2%, that's fine. If you've come in three quarters of the range, or if the C states are a bit poor, three and a half percent is fine. If you are, you know, have closed in quite substantially, whatever that is for the era, and you're doing 5%, that's great. And 10% is amazing. And then and when you check the division screen, if any of the numbers for the ships in that squadron are odd, go have a look at the accuracy report and work out why it's had these extra modifiers, because it may be things like smoke. And sometimes you can do something about it and sometimes you can't. So for example, here is an example from that battle where the three French Guidons are actually interfering with my gunnery. So there's this smoke interference of minus 20, which is actually coming from the middle guidon, covering over the rear guidon, making the accuracy of the uh, Orshilov uh, poorer. Finally, if you sail straight and you only make small turns, you are doing as much as you can to give your ships the steadiest, most reliable gun platform that they can be. And the only other thing you need to worry about is closing the range or opening the range as the tactical situation demands it. If you do those things, you are stacking up the probability that you will have a gunnery advantage. And with a gunnery advantage, you can defeat Lanchester's mathematical uh, inevitability. So, good luck, heavy shooting, happy shooting, stay safe, and see you next time.